It's Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and today I want to talk about one of my favorite topics which is the nervous system and nervous system patterns and I would love for you to chime in here. So if you're new here and you maybe haven't heard me talk about nervous system patterns before then I definitely recommend you go watch one of my other videos first because this one's going to kind of jump off from uh, some of those videos and I'm going to assume that you know what I'm talking about here when I say nervous system pattern. Uh, so we're going to link to those videos in the description below uh, this video. And just briefly, a nervous system pattern, in my opinion, is an ingrained kind of neural loop or pattern of either behavior, thought, or activity in your life that you kind of repeat on automation, uh, consciously or unconsciously. And it can span the gamut from, you know, how you interact with other people to your physical activity to what you eat to so many things. Um, and I've been emailing back and forth with some of my online course students uh, and also getting a chance to get to know a lot of my online course students. And if you're here, hello, I love you guys. Um, and if you're not in my courses, then I hope you join them the next time I open them. Uh, but having these conversations and actually getting to, you know, getting to know people walking through this process themselves, right, not in my office working with me, has really opened my eyes to see where people are kind of struggling. And one of the questions I've been getting asked a lot lately is, you know, people love the idea of wanting to release emotions through their body, maybe therapy hasn't quite worked or it only worked to a certain extent and there's the somatic uh, imprint left, right? And you wanna move it through the body or maybe you want to use fascia release to identify certain nervous system patterns in your life that you believe are holding you, holding you back or keeping you stuck in a loop and not allowing you to live the life you really wanna be living. So some examples of that from actual students of mine that I'm working with right now are people who have a hard time speaking up, speaking their truth. They stuff it down, they hold it back, um, and there's a fear there of either rejection or judgment or shame or something, right? There's some kind of social fear involved with being afraid to speak up and it lives in their body and they instinctively stuff it down, right? And so this is an, um, you know, a good example of a nervous system pattern. And then there are other people who have uh, different patterns related to, um, Maybe it's less about just speaking up versus putting yourself out there or going um, towards something you want in your life out of the fear of failure or whatever. Um, and so the question I've been getting asked is, okay, great. I love this idea of like identifying the nervous system pattern in my body and using fascia release to release any emotions that are uh, involved in this pattern that likely were created right a long time ago, unresolved emotions. Um, and they feel stuck. They're saying, at least of it, like, how, how do I then, you know, use fascia release to change the pattern, right? To actually, like, create systemic change. And, you know, it's, um, I have some good and bad news. <laughs> the good news is you can absolutely use fascia release to identify nervous system patterns and reactivity like automated reactivity that you have when life confronts you or you're faced with certain um, intense sensations or emotions uh, or you're getting asked to take action to change something in your life uh, and you can definitely release emotions through fascia release whether it's on your own or you know with a practitioner um, I generally don't recommend seeking out an emotional release I don't know if it works that way uh, I just recommend that you be open to any emotion that you have when you're doing fascia release as a way to allow it to come out if it's there and it wants to come out that way. Uh, but the thing that I want to really talk about today is kind of the bad news <laughs> part, um, which is that you know you, you can't just isolate your body and the fascial system and expect to change your whole life with a foam roller. Um, you can do a lot with a foam roller, uh, but for example, uh, this you know one example that I'm thinking of of somebody wanting to change the pattern of speaking up, you have to actually go speak up. Um, you have to you know like go seek out 
people in your life that maybe for whatever reason, uh, you know, you feel fear around them, around speaking up, or situations that will require you to speak up. Maybe it's a Toastmasters event, maybe it's public speaking, maybe it's starting your own YouTube channel, um, or maybe it's simply having that hard conversation with someone in your life that you've been avoiding for a long time. I don't know what the situation is, but you can identify those patterns with fascia release and identify them in your body for sure. You can you can actually learn so much about yourself through your body, but you have to then go take action in that area of your life. And the faster you go take action, the faster this pattern is gonna change. So if you just expect you know, yourself to automatically start behaving in different ways simply because you've released fascia, I'm sorry, it doesn't necessarily work that way. Um, another story that I'm thinking about right now that seems like a great example um, to bring up in this conversation is a client of mine who um, I've told stories about her before. She, we actually have videos of her sessions with me here on YouTube. Um, her name is Desiree. And she originally came to me with, um, you know, six years of not being able to walk for more than 10 minutes without severe hip pain. She broke her hip when she was 19 and um, she'd been through a lot since then. I'm not gonna tell her whole story. But beginning to work with me, she started to release a lot of emotions um, that she wasn't necessarily expecting. Uh, and then she started to feel intense fear of activity because for a long time, anytime she would be active, it would give her pain, right? And before that, she could be active and had some pain, but it was manageable to her. Um, and anyway, she just developed this intense fear of, if I go for a hike now, am I gonna blow out my hip? And she'd had a hip replacement surgery. She had to wait like 17 years before she could get it because she was too young when she broke her hip. Uh, so all the imaging, all the you know surgery reports and whatever said it was a super successful surgery. Her hip was fine. There's nothing wrong with her, but she had this intense fear that if she went and did this activity, any activity really, biking, walking, if she overdid it, she would blow her hip out and not be able to walk again. This is definitely a nervous system pattern. It probably started as a realistic fear, right? Because she actually had a broken hip and she blew it out. And at this point, it's now an ingrained neural loop. It's She's, you know, kind of acting out that fear on automation um, because it's so ingrained. So we were working together and at one point I just, you know, had to like push her out the door like, no, you can go, you know, hike again. And I actually had to go with her. And this was one of the coolest, you know, client experiences I've ever had. And she's become a dear friend. And I love her so much, but she kind of needed me to be there on the trail with her just in case anything happened. Um, but we did a, you know, I think a 40 minute hike the first time. And then after that, we did um, a, an hour and a half hike. And then she went and hiked a 14er on her own. Um, but the point of this story isn't necessarily to tell you her story, but to describe to you the process of, you might call it inoculation. Uh, so she had to go face the fear and then learn that she was gonna be okay. And here's the thing, she did have some aches and pains after hiking, but guess what? She hadn't moved her body for more than 10 minutes in six years, and then she had hip replacement surgery. Um, and it, you know, she was a year post-op and still not able to walk much. So of course, <laughs> the human body's gonna have aches and pains when you haven't moved very much for six years and you've mostly stayed sedentary. Uh, so sometimes our fears, you know, seem rational, but they're, you know, maybe somewhat irrational, or we might look at them and realize like, you know what, that's actually a valid fear. However, um, I'm not like, I'm not going to die. I'm not actually going to blow out my hip. I'm just going to have to learn how to help my body be active again. And I'm going to have to accept some of the aches and pains that come along with that. So, you know, to go back to the other woman that I'm thinking of, one of my students, um, with a fear of speaking up. I had this fear for a really long time because speaking up um, at one point in my life meant, uh, you know, getting, feeling shame or feeling, you know, hurt, my feelings got hurt or rejection or whatever. Um, and the thing is, you may very well get rejected. You may very well get some judgment. You may very well not enjoy the experience of speaking up those first few times you do it. But you have to decide if speaking up matters more to you 
than staying quiet, regardless of what anybody else out there does. So I don't know what your nervous system patterns are. I don't know what you know, you're know you facing right now, though I'd love to know if you wanna share in the comments below this video. Uh, but if you're wanting to actually create new neural loops, new patterns, and not simply erase the old ones, and I, I'm not sure we even just can erase them. I think we have to replace them. You have to go take action towards the thing uh, that you want in your life instead of the one you don't. So again, this example of speaking up, you have to go start speaking up. So my recommendation for you is as soon as you identify a pattern and you know you want to change it in your life, look for and you know, basically keep your eyes and ears and heart open every single day for all the opportunities that are there for you to change the pattern from the one you don't want to the one you do want because i promise you they're there you're gonna you know see many opportunities even maybe it's even you know like ordering a cup of coffee and doing it in a different way speaking up in a different way or saying hi to someone in a new more outgoing way than you have before. I don't know, but there are opportunities in our lives every single day to change the ingrained automated behavior um, and replace it with something of our choosing. And you just have to go, go do it, go take action. So the best way, in my opinion, to fully change these patterns is to combine working with your body and in your life and taking action and actually ingraining it through changing them both at the same time. So you can use fascia release and you can prime your body and free up your potential. So I always say that, you know, fascia release uh, taken to optimization frees up your potential, but what you do with that potential is up to you. And if you just let it kind of stagnate, it's stagnating potential. You have to actually go use it in your life. So you can use it physically, you can use it emotionally, you can use it for your career, you can use it to change patterns that are, you know, more social or relational, uh, you know, whatever the case is, but you have to actually go use that potential to create those new patterns. So there you go. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. If you're currently working on a nervous system pattern, I would love for you to share some of your process below. I know this can get a little vulnerable, but I strive to create a safe space in which we can have these conversations. I will not allow any disrespectful comments. They'll get deleted. So I hope you'll actually, you know, jump in and, and share um, some of what you're going through and we can actually have a public conversation about this because I think this is really potent stuff for us to do together, not just in isolation on our own. And I know that, for example, in my online courses, the more people share, the more other people share and the more inspired everybody becomes. So I hope you'll share something in the comment section below. I will be looking for your comment. I'll see you there. And if you're new here, welcome. I hope you stick around by hitting that subscribe button. And I've got some free resources for you. If you join my email community, you can do that by clicking the link below in this, in this description. We've got new videos that go out every Monday and Wednesday on all things fascia, nervous system, pain, trauma, healing, and living your best life. So I'll see you next time.